During the following sections, we want to turn our attention towards views and their benefits within DBMSs such as MySQL. Views allow us to present a subset of column information from one or more tables or even from views that are defined on other tables to our user community. So as a result, we're able to provide a subset and preferably a secure subset of data to that user community or to the appropriate user community. Let's open a shell. We'll open our notes and take some notes regarding the usages of views. If you are a DBA, you already know the inherent benefits of using views. But if you're not, then this is for those who aren't terribly familiar with DBMS technologies. So we're focusing on views and their benefits. And one of the major benefits of using views is that you're able to present a subset of information to your clientele. So let's list that we are, or it allows the DBA to present a subset of data to the user community. And of course we have an example of wanting to present a subset of data to the user community. Let's open a shell and connect to our MySQL instance. We'll just stretch this window out a little bit. And of course we're going to fo focus on the HR table. We'll log in as the user root and be prompted for the password, which is still ABC123. And we'll have to use the HR database, but we'll just show databases just to ensure nothing's changed and then use HR. Let's show tables. And as you can see, we have an employees table. We left off recently when looking at joins with an employee underscore dependents table. And there's also a pay scale table or pay underscore scale table, which stores the various pays that employees are likely to earn. Let's define the structure of employees to see why a view would help us by using the describe command followed by employees. As you can see, the employees table contains information that shouldn't be published to everyone, including date of birth, termination date, start date, as well as pay scale ID. Probably the most important from this particular base table is the pay underscore scale underscore ID column. Because if a person gains access to the pay underscore table, they'll be able to correlate the values from the employee's base table to the various values in pay underscore scale. If you recall, the pay underscore scale ID is used to join to the ID column in pay scale to resolve the employee's salary. So this is a perfect example of how a view could help us out. Let's say, rather than storing redundant information within our DBMS for our employees, including their first name, last name, maybe even middle name. We want to create a view or a subset or some sort of presentation that only represents these three columns. This is a perfect example for why we'd want to use a view or a perfect use for a view. Because via a view, we can present only the columns that are of interest to the user community, including first name, last name, and middle name for now. And we can also update the view later on in the event that we need to present more or fewer columns. So let's go ahead and list the syntax that's necessary to set up this view. View syntax represents or looks like the following. Create space view which is the default requirement for most DDL statements, usually a create followed by the function that you intend to invoke, followed by the view name. Now, one note about the view name. The view name must be unique, and it should not mimic or copy or attempt to replicate the name of a table that's already defined within the database because views are treated to some degree as tables. They are table structures, they are two-dimensional with rows and columns, and they do represent one or more tables and or views. And they're treated in the same namespace or stored within the name, same namespace as tables and as a result need unique names. So let's include a note which states that views must 
have unique names from tables and other views because they share the same namespace as tables. So let's also include another note which says views share the same namespace as tables and other views and other views which is why we must ensure uniqueness so let's create view view name and the syntax continues to include a list of columns between parentheses here we specify the columns that are to be extracted so from the base table for example employees we want to extract first name L name and middle underscore name so we'll specify a list of columns separated by commas and these are the columns that will be selected so F name L name followed by middle underscore name and then we'll use the as keyword followed by a select statement the select statement carries out the actual select which will get the data from the base table or base tables so the syntax is create view followed by its name followed by column list followed by as and the select statement that will grab the data for us so let's go ahead and define the view that we will use we'll copy this particular syntax and the view syntax that we'll use or statement that we'll use is as follows this view will represent employee info so we'll call this particular view employee list because it's a simple list that anyone in the company who has access to the DBMS will be granted access to for the sake of looking up employee names we want first name L name and middle underscore name followed by a select statement that makes sense let's specify that we want to select the same columns F name L name and middle name by the way the columns that you select here in the select statement portion of the command must match a number of columns specified between the parentheses because these columns will be defined in the view and you need to match the order so if you select or if you indicate F name first and select F name first L name second L name second middle name third middle name third the order matters otherwise you'll have information in the wrong columns so we'll select F name L name middle name from the base table employees and that's it this will create the view for us let's go ahead and paste this into our terminal monitor window and see what the results are like when we attempt to view data from the particular view we'll control shift V and now we have a new view created super now let's do a show tables just to see what has changed in the tables list you'll notice that the same list of three tables the base tables employee did or employees being a base table pay scale lookup employee dependence lookup but employee underscore list which we just defined as a view also shows up as a table so prior our table list consisted of three tables now it consists of four tables because again views are treated in the same namespace as tables so as a result the view shows up as such now if you want to see the syntax that was used to create this particular view use show create view and we can capitalize all of this just for readability so that's show create view followed by the view name and we'll just copy this syntax into our notes and of course this information is available in any MySQL documentation that you can find but this particular syntax shows or if you want to to reveal syntax used to create view execute show create view followed by view name in our case that's going to be simply employee underscore list so let's go ahead and specify in employee underscore list and we'll see the syntax momentarily that was used to create the view and that's employee underscore list super here's the syntax that was used 
to create the view. The syntax is more elaborate. It contains more information than we specified. and We'll explain momentarily what these additional options are. The definer is root. In other words, a person who created the view is a person who's currently logged in, root. And in order to create a view, you do need create view privileges within the database. But we're root, and we have full grant privileges to the entire DBMS, so we're able to do so. But for other users, you'll have to grant the create view permissions for a given database in order for view creation to work. Notice that aliases were used prior to selecting from a given table. And all the tables are fully qualified in the definition of the view. Employees.fname as fname, so aliasing is being used, because with views you can select a column named one thing and represent it as something totally different. And similarly for last name and for middle name. So all of the columns are matched one to one, but we certainly can change this by using aliases, which we'll look at. So let's now execute a select statement against the view. We'll select star from employee underscore list. And you'll see what's returned includes just a subset of the data stored in the base table. So now you can publish permissions to the employee underscore list view or table, but it's really a view. And be assured that users who query this particular view will not have access to the remainder of the columns that are in the base table. If you recall, if we select star from the base table employees, it contains far more information, including the user's ID, date of birth, email address, start date, termination date, last updated, as well as pay scale ID. But we are purposely filtering this information by using a view. So this is what's available with the view. So again, in order for your standard non-root MySQL users to be able to gain access to information in the view, they will need select privileges to the view. Additionally, they'll need privileges to the columns within the base table, so they'll need to at least be able to select those particular columns because that's how the view works. So we've set up a view. Now what if we wanted to change the view to represent the aliases or to, let's say, include a new column? You could replace the view, but we'll show you that soon enough. What if we wanted to create a different view using different columns? Similar syntax, but using different column headers. Let's copy the syntax that was used in this section. Use aliases with views. We'll just capitalize this. So we'll use similar syntax, but when defining the column headers, we'll use aliasing, such as fname as first name. And you've seen us use this syntax. It should come as no surprise. L name as last name and middle name as, let's say, middle name. This will set up a series of alias column headers, but still select the appropriate columns from the base table employees. And so that we don't clobber the existing view. Let's just call this particular view employee list 2. Again, views need to have identical names. If we were to go ahead and try to create this view as employee list, let's just do it since we want to prove that the same namespace is in use and that uniqueness is important. Let's try to do it. And notice an error is returned. It doesn't allow us to do it. Now let's go ahead and alter it so that it's called employee list 2, for example and debug any potential errors. We'll return to the terminal monitor. And in this case, we're throwing an error because our aliasing is being done earlier than necessary. Now, what if we wanted to go ahead and use aliasing with views? It's quite straightforward. Let's just set up a section called use aliases with views. We'll copy the syntax that was used to create the view in the first place and paste it below. But we'll need to alter where we perform the select. As select fname as, let's call it first space name, 
ditto for L name, L name as last space name, and ditto for middle name as well. This will set up a column header structure within the employee list view. Well, we'll attempt to create an employee list view which will fail because it exists with these column headers, similar to aliasing when using a normal select statement. Let's go ahead and try to paste this in. And notice that an error is returned because employee list already exists. Let's show tables, and it certainly does. So let's attempt to create this view as employee list 2. We wanted to prove that uniqueness matters when creating views because the same namespace is shared. Now we have a new view called employee list 2. Let's show tables again, and there it is. Let's describe employee list 2, and you'll see that the column headers appear to be F name, L name, middle name, but then let's show create view, view underscore name, and in this case view name is employee list 2, and you'll see that each of the columns are selected how we want them to be. So if we were to execute a select star from employee list 2, it returns nicely. Super. So we can set up these views using aliases if we'd like. It makes things much easier to work with. Now let's say that we wanted to update the view and remove some of the columns specified, or perhaps one of the columns. Let's show you how you could do that. There are two ways, in fact. You could use alter view, or you could use the create or replace view syntax. So let's label this section replace view. And we'll do so using a create statement. It's create followed by or replace view. If the view exists, you'll need to have drop privileges to the view so that this command will be able to drop and recreate the view. The name is employee underscore list and we'll select this time only F name followed by last name as select F name L name from employees. So this time our view will consist of two columns. Again, let's show tables employee list and if we select star from employee list you'll see it contains currently three columns so let's go ahead and attempt to replace the existing employee underscore list view by pasting in the results and we had no problems doing so we'll then attempt to rerun a select star and notice that the view only reflects two columns now instead of three so you can use create or replace view as a means for updating a view. And you can also use the alter view statement, which is a DDL statement. So let's list that section as another way to update slash alter views is to use the alter command. We'll specify alter view followed by the view name which in this case is employee underscore list followed by the definition of the view which includes f name comma in fact let's just go with one column f name as select f name from employees so this time we're going from two columns to one column this will alter the employee underscore list view We'll control shift V and it has been affected. Let's rerun a select star from employee underscore list and notice that only one column is returned. So we have two ways of updating views or altering views using create or replace view, which is a shortcut to alter view, or simply using alter view with a similar syntax that was used to create the view. Let's alter the view this time so that we return more interesting columns. So we'll use alter view once again, and we should determine what columns are interesting. So let's describe employees, and we should pick what's interesting. First name and last name are interesting, date of birth, email, 
So let's go with those columns and maybe pay scale ID depending or maybe we perform a join this time you certainly can do joins if you do want to publish information that's based on joins just make sure that your select query performs the join so first let's get the additional columns then we'll perform a join so we'll alter table or alter view employee list to include F name L name we did mention we want DOB as well as email email and we'll start with this as select f name l name dob email from employees we'll paste this in and as you can see working with views is pretty straightforward then let's select star from employee underscore list and now it returns the additional columns and if we execute a describe against employee underscore list you'll see that it contains the columns that are of interest in this case four columns additionally a show create view as we ran earlier will reveal the syntax that was used to create the view and there's the syntax that was used super now we mentioned that you can perform joins as well as subqueries and complex queries to construct your views a join will base our view on more than one table so let's label this section use using joins with views so we can either execute an alter view or create an entirely new view let's create a new view we'll call it employee list 3 so we'll create view employee underscore list 3 this time we'll select F name followed by or perhaps we want to sort or present the last name first. So let's present L name, comma, F name, comma. We'll go with salaries. Let's just double check our salaries table. Let's describe pay underscore scale. So we'll take salaries from the salary the pay scale table. So we want salaries as select L name comma F name comma salaries from now we specify the two tables that are of interest employees which is the base table comma pay underscore scale and then we need a where clause to perform the join or we could go with a left join either or would work where employees dot and let's just double check that our ID column is correct we'll describe employees again so we want to join based on employees dot ID is equivalent to pay scale it's and it's already up top pay scale or pay underscore scale dot ID so where employees dot ID is equal to pay underscore scale dot ID so let's recap the syntax here we're gonna create a new view called employee underscore list three which really is a list of employees last name first name and salary information as the select statement the select statement is a standard select statement with a join with an equi join so we'll select last name first name salaries from employees comma pay scale these are the two tables where employees that id is equal to pay scale that id or pay underscore scale that id and these aren't fully qualified and that's because the only overlapping column is the id column let's attempt to create this view and it's been created so we'll show tables and you now see that we have a new table or really a view called employee underscore list three let's describe employee underscore list three and you'll see that it contains last name first name and salaries salaries being a decimal column which will accept a total of eleven values or a pretty high salary now let's execute a select star from employee employee underscore list three and you'll see what's return includes the user's last name first name followed by salary the employees ID is referencing a salary which is currently indexed at thirty thousand but the join worked as expected you can create views based on many tables or a single table 
Ideally, you create views when performing joins to aggregate information from all over. And in some cases, views are actually updatable. But when you perform joins, at least currently with the current version of MySQL, if you perform joins when defining your views, those views are not updatable. However, simple views, which are usually based on one table, are certainly updatable, depending on the constraints of the table, of course. For example, let's describe employee underscore list, and you'll see that it performs no joins. It simply selects first name, last name, date of birth, as well as email. If we wanted to update this particular view, we could attempt to, but there could be table constraints which would restrict us from updating it. But let's say we wanted to update first name, misspelling it, for example. So we'll update, and you'll specify instead of the name of the base table, which is employees, we'll specify employee underscore list setting a given column. Let's go with F name, for example equal to the value that we'd like to set it to, not updating anything else. And there's only one record, so we don't need to specify a where clause. So we'll set first name to big T. And notice that one value was changed and one was updated, one row matched. We didn't need a where clause because there's only one record once again. Let's ensure that the changes have been applied by selecting star from employees the base table and you'll see that the base table has been updated the first name has changed let's then go ahead and select star from employee underscore list which is the first view that was defined and it was updated so in cases where you don't have constraint issues or you're not basing information on joins which means two or more tables views are updatable in MySQL as we've just shown you. Let's go ahead and update this again to the original value. And also views are insertable if they're not too complex or have too many dependencies. That means you can insert values into views which means that you can tailor views to suit applications. You may have a wider base table but present a narrower view for your application to use. And the application could be a user, front-end program like Access, a web application, or simply a user keying in values through some other front-end. But the view from a security perspective restricts access to the number of columns in a given table. Let's select or let's set F name back to the original value followed by select star from employee underscore list and you'll see that it's been updated or restored to the original value. So we should list that views are updatable. And then we'll just also say check documentation for rules and regulations. There are some rules concerning updating views and inserting into views and logically so because of all of the dependencies but they are updatable now what if you wanted to drop views well the drop view statement is there for you let's show tables and as you know we have three views defined employee list employee list two and employee list three let's go ahead and drop employee list three by simply executing a drop view followed by the name in this case employee underscore list three now these commands of course require the appropriate privileges within the database. So you need to have certain DDL rights such as create view, drop view in order to perform these functions. In this case we're root, we have all grants, if you recall show grants reveals the privileges for the currently logged in user and we have all privileges to everything with the grant option so we're not restricted. But in a case where you grant access to a normal user which assigns anonymous privileges, you'd have to explicitly grant privileges such as creating and dropping views or any other DDL type operation that is likely to be performed by the user within the database. Let's take a look at our tables again and we'll go ahead and just drop view employee list 2 and we're left simply with employee list as the lone view. Let's select star from employee list and you'll see it ret retrieves 
just a few columns or just four columns. We could extend this view once again. Let's say we wanted to resolve salary information because we just want to see a subset. Well, let's go ahead and execute that alter statement again for employee lists. And we want to perform some resolution of salary. So in fact, we should be taking the employee list three create statement since it makes it easy for us and we'll just change it from a create view to an alter view so let's alter view employee underscore list will drop the three and we want it to represent perhaps last name first name comma DOB and then salaries and we'll select last name first name comma DOB comma salaries we can qualify all of this from employees comma pay scale where employees.id is equivalent to pay scale ID. Again, we can qualify this by specifying the table where the information is stored. So we know that last name is stored in the employees base table, so we could go ahead and say employees dot to fully qualify the column. Ditto for first name, ditto for DOB, and salaries will be pay underscore scale dot salaries. They can all be qualified and stored within the definition of the view. Let's take a brief look here by executing this alter view statement. Notice it ran nicely. And let's go ahead and describe employee underscore list. And you'll see that it now contains last name, first name, date of birth, as well as salaries, which means a select star from employee underscore list will reveal information pertaining to the loan employee, date of birth is included, as well as salary. So we're able to present this subset of information which makes views a useful feature. And again, a view functions like a table in that you can grant privileges to the view. So you can ensure that only the appropriate users have access to the views that are defined within MySQL. And again, views can cross tables. So you can include multiple tables as long as you perform the proper joins. Another dependency or caveat that you should be aware of is that note views are dependent upon underlying tables which means that if you define views based on one or more tables be sure that any changes that you make to those underlying tables gets updated in the views in other words if you drop a table that a view relies upon then obviously you'll have a broken data set so you want to be careful when manipulating tables that views rely upon but using and manipulating views are quite easy with the statements provided by MySQL and it's a powerful database tool which actually increases the security of your database and also provides a subset of information rather than the full set of information making it much much easier to work with